Hi, beloved, it's Mama Mia La. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. Oh, at the portals, he's waiting and watching, watching for you and for me. Come home, come home, you who are weary, come home. See at the portals, he's waiting and watching. Watching, oh, my darlings, come home. Well, there's Jesus holding my face as my dream of him. And that'll be a whole nother video. I think I already have an old video and a song that I wrote about my dream about Jesus. But today I want to talk about the battleship of the mind. I've got some notes here, and you're going to see me look over and refer to them. Because I am getting older, and my memory is not as sharp. But boy, what's happened to me this week is real powerful. I've been real sick on and off. A lot of edema in my feet. Broke my right arm this year earlier. Then broke my right foot. Where was I going when I went? Broke my right arm. I was going to feed the hungry, the homeless. And so I took issue with God and go, where were you? And then the Lord spoke to me for the next four months in the healing process. Painful healing process when you get older of your bones. But I can raise my arm now. And he talked to me and he said, where's your faith? Why aren't you utilizing all the tools I gave you? I gave you the armor of God, as it says in Ephesians chapter 16. I gave you scriptures like 2 Corinthians 10 and 5. Cast down all emotions, imaginations, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. That's your own thoughts too. Start there. It isn't just other mean people's thoughts. He wants you to start with, with your own. Because the Bible says our hearts are deceitfully wicked. And who can tell? Um, I also have a picture up here. It's a little Thomas Kincaid tapestry that I bought a long time ago. This picture I painted from a dream of where Jesus held my face and said, yep, he said it, I'll love you forever. And he washed me in the sea, in the sea of glass. He took the water and he washed me. I needed cleaning up. This is where the battle is, right here, right here. And if we don't put on the helmet of salvation and put on the mind of Christ and memorize scriptures, but not just say them, but get them in here and believe them. Like Mark 11, watch this. In the book of Mark, it says, "Say to the, Jesus said, Say to the mountain, Be thou removed and cast into the sea, and you'll have whatever you say. But if you doubt it, you won't have what you say. You'll be like the, the wind, the waves of the sea being torn, thrown to and fro. Jesus wants us to be firm in our faith. And we need to pray, God, firm in my faith every day. Make it strong. Help me to wait on you and wait on the manifestation of your word. I want to talk to everybody. The Bible says, be all things to all men. Paul said that. I want to do that. For those that are just beginning their faith, those that are further along in their faith, they probably don't need to hear this. They already know this, but you don't know my experience. I don't care how much you know. You don't know what just happened to me. They talk about fake news. Boy, oh boy, this is so real. Okay, very simply, we get a headache. What do we do? We take a pill. We get a diagnosis from the doctor that you have breast cancer. What do we do? We sign up for chemo and radiation, or one or the other, or both. What do we do? Our husband's cruel to us. He doesn't remember it's our anniversary. We ask him to do something around the house and he doesn't want to do it. Our mind starts spinning. 
negativity. He doesn't love me. I have a bad marriage. The mind. That starts in the mind, the battlefield of the mind. And what do we do? We start fearing. We start getting anxious. And God says, be not anxious for nothing. But in everything, present your request to God. And the peace of God will rule your heart in Christ Jesus. But if you don't present it to God, it's not going to go away. How about uh, fear that just suddenly grips us from a bad dream? Or somebody says something to us and it just makes us fearful. The Bible says again, submit to God, resist the devil, and resist your own flesh spinning you, and he will flee, and your flesh will become stilled by peace of Christ. Scripture is so important. And here's another one. Casting down all imaginations that goes on into our head. Oh my gosh, do we spin in every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God? Bring it into captivity. Lock it up. Every thought to the obedience of Christ. Why do you think that your mind is so wonderful and you think about everything that is good and all your decisions are just and fair? We are wicked. <laughs> We're deceitfully wicked. And who can tell, the Bible says in Proverbs. We, we, we sin like sparks that go flying up when you're out in a barbecue. We're continually uh, working ourselves up. And then we get to that part, part that we start judging people because we have worked ourselves up. And, and then sin, we begat sin from that. So today I wanted to say that we have to take control of our mind and we have to submit it to God and submit ourselves and our sins. Ask God to forgive us. And then we have to put on the whole armor of God. Uh, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, his righteousness, his mind, the mind of Christ, and our left hand, the shield of faith, which extinguishes the fiery darts of the devil, even our own bad thoughts of ourselves. And in our right hand, like I'm saying, I'm quoting scripture. We actually put on the word of God. We use that sword. It's a double edge. It not just keeps the enemy away from us, but it builds us up and edifies us, the word of God. Am I grouchy or hungry? Is my flesh working against my own happy thought processes? Is some old baggage coming up at that moment that has triggered my body? Is it the world bothering me and its negative ways and the people on the freeway or my coworkers, or my family members opposing me or is it my boss or professors at school? Not, not really. I have my place in school and life. And I'm really basically okay. A lot of problems is Satan, and we don't want to ever think that it's him. So we don't want to wrestle with him. But it says that we're not wrestling against flesh. Okay? We do have some problems with our flesh. But our main enemy, it says in Ephesians chapter 6, that we're, we're fighting with principalities and powers from above. Haven't you noticed you go to a party and everything's fine or you go to a gathering, all of a sudden it'll turn bad for no reason. It isn't just your flesh or somebody else's flesh. And it isn't because there isn't enough um, hamburgers to go around. The enemy will come in. He doesn't like unity, fun, kindness, love, sharing, generosity, family. He doesn't like Christian marriages, Christian children. And he's got his co-workers. And they're on the earth, and I don't want to talk about them, but you know who they are. Those dark spirits that want to manipulate, those Jezebel spirits, some people use that word. Listen, it's always the mind. Satan wants the mind. You have to battle for your mind's safety. You have to hide it in Christ. It's always about submitting it to God, submitting your problem to God. Um... Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. Um, and we can't doubt the Lord. We have to trust him and praise him after he delivers us. It turned out that the other day, I, every time I went to type my memoir, sleep came over me. I, I, I attributed it to the normal 